Well, DeAndre Swift for the Detroit Lions uh, had a really good game uh, and, you know, kind of finally really broke out. He didn't even have that many carries, but he made the most of them uh, in this game. And so uh, definitely very cool to see. And let's just get into it and we'll start things off with this play. So the way it's going to work is that first things first, there's actually going to be two key blocks. That's going to be the right guard and right tackle who run over to block two defensive linemen. You also have a double team where the center is going to you know, start off blocking a defensive lineman. Then he runs up and blocks a uh, middle linebacker. Uh, and because of this, what's going to end up happening is that there is another Jaguars player. It's going to be a run to the bottom of the screen. Uh, and there is another Jaguars player in that area. But what's going to happen is that Detroit is going to pull their tight end up to the top of the screen. And that's actually going to convince the J Jacksonville player who's in that area to follow him in the top of the screen. So that that's kind of how this is going to work. Uh, and once this ball is snapped, you notice how there is a clear gap for Swift to run through. So this worked out very well. This was a good run block play, good design play. Uh, and, you know, at this point, Swift can easily run through a gap. So, you know, this play itself, I think a lot of people are probably going to say, not that big of a deal. It, you know, it's kind of just, it is what it is, it happens. But I do like about this play is that once Swift gets through that gap, he is able to get to a very high top, high top speed and runs forward. Eventually, a defensive back brings him down, but he's able to gain a good amount of yards because of his speed. And that's that's something, you know, again, I think that he had a big uh, hole to run through. Pretty much every halfback is going to gain some yards on that play, gain a lot of yards on that play. But give some credit to Swift. You know, that was his most notable play. Uh, and, you know, uh, listen, uh, a a 50-plus yard run is a 50-plus yard run, regardless of how easy it came. I also like this play. It's a touchdown run. Uh, it's going to be at the goal line. Um, looked like really at pre-snap where Swift wanted to run was going to be in between his left guard and left tackle. But the problem is going to be the Jaguar, who I have circled. He's going to do a pretty good job of just crashing in and clogging up that gap. Like, as you see, once it starts, uh, he gets through there. So now for Swift... There isn't really a gap that he can run through. So there isn't a place where you can just sort of run through and, you know, walk into the end zone like you kind of hope for on a third down and go out to one. So instead, what he what is he going to do? Well, he's just going to say, hey, I can still try to find a way to get to, get over the goal line and over being the key word because watch how he leaps up and is able to make the grab. Uh, I like that play because it was, you know, sometimes guys just try to leap up just like in general, this wasn't that. Swift sort of realized my best odds of scoring a touchdown on this play is to sort of go up and over. And so that's what he did. So I liked it. One of the things that Swift is doing a really good job at doing is really just making good reads. That's what he's uh, doing a tremendous job at, where he he is, like this play, for example, the one you see on your screen, uh, it's going to be a, a play to the right side of the screen. It's a run scheme to the right side of the screen. And basically what Swift is supposed to do is he basically looks at every single gap, sees if there is a hole, and if not, the last option on this play is going to be to run to the left of his left tackle, you know, to his left, so towards the bottom of the screen. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that there is a Jaguars player who is unblocked somewhat in that area. He's the contain guy, but typically the hope is that on that play, he's going to be far enough away that you can still gain some yards. Like, watch how right when this ball is snapped, you notice how there really isn't much. I mean, Swift could maybe try to, you know, zigzag a little bit and try to run through, but he's going to elect to do the last read, which is, you know, go to the left of his left tackle. Now, 55 for Jacksonville isn't in a horrible position. You know, he had to run over to try to get into to the contained spot. The blocking scheme was already farther away from him. So, you know, it's a tough play for him to make, but he's still in okay position. So this could easily end up backfiring for Swift if he decides to make this move, but he is going to do it anyways. So watch how he's quick enough where there's only a little bit of contact. He doesn't allow it to go down and then just levels another Jaguars player. So that's just, again, that's a high quality play right there by a rookie running back. Uh, really, really good to see. He is somebody who can break things to the outside. He is somebody who I honestly believe could be an Aaron Jones type runner. I mean, that's the style. I'm not saying he'll be as good as Aaron Jones, but he, def he definitely has that potential. Um, like, take a look at this one, where that's going to be the running uh, scheme, what you see on the screen. And again, what's worth mentioning here is I've really singled out one Jaguars player, the one on the top of the screen. He is unblocked on this play. He, No one is going to block him. Uh, and usually you do that because it's going to be run up the middle, and it looks like that's what designed uh, but it was designed on this play. But once this ball is snapped, you're going to see that Swift doesn't really like too much of what he sees in front of him. Now, 
This is a constant debate. I feel like when you're talking about running backs, do you want your running back to just put your head down, run forward, and gain two yards? Or do you want your running back to be a home run hitter, to try to break things to the outside in these situations, or try to figure out a way to, instead of getting you know, a two-yard gain, to try to get a 10, 15 yard gain. And if it doesn't, and if it doesn't work out, it could result in a loss. You know, what's the better, uh, what's the better plan on this one? Honestly, there are very fair arguments on either side. You could easily argue that you should just run up the middle. You could argue that you should break to the outside. Uh, I don't really know statistically what they say, but you know, to me, the logical side is that if you can successfully get to the outside and pick up those big runs, then obviously it's worth it. And if you can't, then obviously it's not. Swift is able to get to the outside. Watch how he has that speed where he stopped on a nine, but then is able to accelerate so quickly. He is still able to get around the edge and get a 15 yard gain. He picks up the first down. Uh, and again, it's like, you know, you could argue whether or not that's the right decision, but if it works out, no one's really going to argue too hard that it was the wrong decision. So, uh, you know, good decision there, I think. He likes to play aggressive. He likes to really make the edge guys and make the contain guys work. Uh, he wants to make them be the ones who make the tackle because if they don't, he could gain a lot. Uh, and even if they do make the tackle, it can still work well. Like on this play, uh, it's you really, I mean, you know, again, uh, the player I've circled in black, that's the one who's going to be the contain guy here. And Swift is the back. And watch how Swift, you know, he's going to get to, again, the left of his, it's actually the tight end on, you know, who's right next to the left tackle, but he gets, you know, further to the left than any of his offensive linemen or blockers on this play. And, you know, it is going to be a tackle, but he's still able to gain five yards because he's quick enough and he falls forward. So, you know, little plays like that, they're really effective. And he had a really good game. He should, you know, uh, I think Detroit Lions fans should be very excited about what the prospects of a DeAndre Swift for the rest of, uh, you know, his career could be. I mean, a 116-yard day with two touchdowns, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, he's putting up numbers that, uh, you know, uh, he's getting compared. The numbers are like he has had certain things where he's like, this is the first Lions rookie running back to do this since Barry Sanders. So anytime that sentence is said, uh, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. Uh, obviously, he has quite a ways to go to being one of the best running backs in the league to ever play. But uh, very good first season, you know, first really breakout game for him. I hope they get him more touches. You know, I want to see him play more. I mean, you have a rookie running back. Why not see what you got? I'm not saying don't, you know, obviously you can't run him into the ground, but uh, I mean, I don't know. The Lions are still competitive. They are still two and three. They feel like they have a shot to make the playoffs. They should feel that way because you are two and three and they do have talent on this roster. Uh, we'll have to see how they go, but I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get uh, more touches from, from Swift throughout the course of this season. That's what I think. What do you guys think? What did you think of his performance? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.